Hey everybody, Rich with PCC. Hey, here to talk to you today about uh, motor control and, and specifically the, the Siemens IEC motor starter line. Uh, they call it the Serious Innovations line of product. Uh, I know that doesn't sound super exciting. Uh, I know there's a lot of, a lot of contactors and, and IEC starters out there on the market, but there's a few key uh, functions and capabilities that these, that these devices have that I'd like to point out to you today. Uh, first of all, uh, and, and kind of the simplest thing, is the location of the uh, coil terminals on the contactor. Uh, if, if you see here, we've got the A1 and A2 terminals here right on the top of the contactor of this uh, screw connected contactor. Uh, if we go to the spring terminal version, uh, A1 and A2 again is right here on the top. Why is that important? Well, uh, for those of you that might be using a competitor's product today, uh, you may have had the pleasure of disassembling a contactor so that you can flip those coil terminals around. Because if you want to attach a motor starter protector to the input side of that contactor, if your coil terminals are on the top of the contactor, that's no good. So we've seen plenty of cases where the top of that contactor has to come off, the coil has to be spun around so the terminals are on the bottom, and then you can attach your MSP. That takes a long time. So this is not an option for Siemens. This isn't something that you have to order special. Uh, their contactors are always gonna have those coil terminals available to you regardless of whether you use the MSP uh, or not. The second thing that I wanna bring up to you is the concept of spring terminals. Uh, Siemens has the largest range, uh, horsepower range up to 25 horsepower uh, for spring terminal uh, contactors and, and MSPs. Uh, the reason that's important again is time savings. You know, Just like you don't have to flip that coil around with these products, the same thing goes with the assembly uh, of, the, of the products when you're trying to put them into the panel. So if we look at how uh, things go together, if we start with the MSP itself and we have this, uh, this link module, we can very easily slide that together and now we've made an electrical connection uh, to that motor starter protector. Uh, then when we wanna add our contactor, it's a very similar uh, procedure. We uh, snap them together. And that's it, that's all that's needed to make the connections, the power connections between the MSP and the contactor. Another added benefit of the way Siemens does the link module is the fact that it's not just an electrical connection, it's also a mechanical connection. So when we look at the mounting of these devices, we've got a place for, uh, for DIN rail to go both on the contactor and the MSP, but in the Siemens situation, we only have to attach the MSP uh, to the DIN rail because the contactor is supported by the link module mechanically. They do easily come apart uh, if you need to disassemble and reassemble. Okay. The third thing that I want to talk about is busing. When we think about the wiring to every one of these devices, you know, typical installations we would see three wires coming out of uh, some type of wireway. Uh, we'd see uh, the, the control wiring coming into the coil of the contactor and then we'd see the output wiring uh, going out to the motor itself. And bringing all that input power in individually, again, is time consuming and it uses up a lot of materials. Uh, historically, if we look at the, the methodology of using busing systems, you're probably familiar with these, these bus, uh, bus comb style um, uh, bus bars. And lots of manufacturers have these. They do save time uh, with the installation process because now we can go ahead and bring uh, our main wiring in. So we can bring in our main conductors and we can attach our bus bar and then we can go out a number of devices and have that all bus together. The problem with that solution though, is if I have four, five, six starters bust together on this, on this bus bar, if one of them needs to be replaced, I have to remove this bus bar in order to, to replace one of those starters. So I gotta take down that whole, that whole bank of group motor starters uh, in order to replace one because of the way that that system is bust. So that brings me to the Siemens busing system, what they call the 3RV29 infeed system. So if I look at this device, it's, it's, a, it's a mounting base uh, with, with input power terminals. So you can see here, I have three input power terminals. These are spring terminals. Uh, and, and, and I can bring in my input power for my group motor installation into those terminals. And then when it comes to assembling the starters onto that, again, I take my, my spring loaded starters. I have the kind of the shape and dimensions of a 35 millimeter DIN rail here. And I simply, assemble that starter onto that bus bar. And in order to make my power connection, again, since I'm using spring terminals, 
All that I need to do is line up this top bus connector with the connections on the contactor itself. Push that together and now I have my power is input to this base and then power is fed to the contactor and now all I have to do is do my, my control wiring and my output power wiring out to my motor. This bus bar can be expanded. Uh, so if you look here, I have, I have an expansion device. You can see it can take two more starters because I've got the two connections here. Uh, these can be purchased for, with, with two or three motor starters. And the way that these connect is the bus bars go next to each other. And then I simply have a coupling device that, that's delivered with that and I push them together. And now I have room for four motor starters, or I could do, I could add another one, I could have six motor starters. The only limit that you have is you have a 63 amp current capacity that runs across the back of this, uh, the back of this back plane. So once you hit 63 amps, it's time to start a new bank. Uh, but we find a lot of cases where, you know, four, five, six motor starters is really about all we need. Uh, so the combination of the, uh, the, the spring terminal devices plus the 3RV29 busing system can really make the installation process go a lot faster and a lot cleaner. If we take that a step further, you think about all the control wiring that gets then sent to the auxiliary contacts and the contacts on the coil, or I should say the terminals for the coil control. Uh, that can end up being quite a bit of I.O. that you use up from your PLC system or your control system. Uh, these devices can also be controlled over I.O. link. A lot of folks think of smart sensors when we talk about I.O. link. Siemens has actually applied that to motor control. So through one I.O. link master with four ports, we can control up to 16 motor starters. Again, significantly reducing that wiring. The last thing that I'll bring up is uh, Siemens can also, instead of a, a standard contactor, it can also be a soft starter. Uh, we, we've seen other manufacturers make soft starters in this form factor, but they typically have to be hardwired. In our case, again, we can leverage that spring terminal, we can leverage that physical size, we can leverage the 3RV29 busing system, and we can attach that soft starter directly to this setup. So just kind of sum things up. If we think about where your coil connections are and how much time you're putting into wiring, uh, Siemens can really be helpful uh, from the perspective of the assembly, the wiring, uh, and, and just kind of the, the overall time that you're spending with the product in order to get it assembled into a panel. Thanks a lot for your time. Have a great day.